our concept of self-acceptance in rational emotive therapy, R.E.T., it consists of, or is involved with, being alive is good, that's your concept, and staying alive and making yourself happy is good today and tomorrow. And these are good, meaning you choose to enjoy them. They're not good in themselves, but they're good because you choose them. And the belief that I like and enjoy my abilities that keep me alive and enjoying and dislike my disabilities and defects that interfere with my happiness. So self-acceptance, again, is a philosophy that involves living and enjoying but not rating yourself, which most people think is the essence of living and enjoying and it's really the essence of falling on your goddamn face. Now, how about unconditional acceptance? Because that's what we're going to talk about today. Not conditional, I am okay, or I enjoy myself, or I like myself, when certain things happen. But what is unconditional self-acceptance consistent? And it means accepting yourself, your life, your aliveness, your enjoyment, what you want to do, avoiding what you don't want to do, with poor achievement as well as with good achievement and unconditional acceptance, a rare thing, which I hope to have you get by the end of this lecture, but it's rare, means accepting yourself even with no achievement. You can still accept life and enjoyment even if you had no achievement. That would be a little difficult, but you could do it. And it means accepting yourself with little approval or with no damn unconditionally, whether or not. And that means accepting yourself with love or without love. With a good family, the original one or the one you help bring into existence or without. Accepting yourself with marriage or without marriage or making. Unconditional self-acceptance again means Accepting yourself when you know that you're efficacious, what Albert Bandura calls self-efficacy, but also without self-efficacy. If you know you're schnooky and unefficacious, you can still accept yourself. It means accepting yourself in a good environment or a crummy environment, with poor talents and abilities and with just about no talents and abilities, if that's conceivable. That's almost inconceivable, but it could happen. With handicaps, stupidities, ugliness, weaknesses of body and mind, poor finances, no matter what, that's what unconditional acceptance is. You can always accept yourself. Accept yourself when you're the target of bigotries, whether they be racial, religious, or political, or other bigotries, you still don't put yourself down, accepting yourself even, as all of you unfortunately will get around to, even when you are aging, you still accept yourself. And then, in emotional terms, unconditional acceptance of you means accepting yourself when you're neurotic, which most of you talented neurotics are, when you're unconfident, when you're indecisive, when you're shy, when you're withdrawn, when you're hostile, you're goofy, lazy, undisciplined, when you're not changing yourself, as we hope you will, when failing to work at therapy, even at noble R.E.T. therapy, and when working at therapy and still failing. So you see, unconditional acceptance includes many things, not just a couple of things, and it is unconditional, which means at all times, under all conditions. Now, when you don't do this, which most of you work your asses off to not do, to not accept yourself, then you get some dismal results. You get what we call shame, embarrassment, humiliation, feelings, feelings of inadequacy, lack of confidence, frequently shyness, withdrawal, loneliness, and the feelings, which are usually considered disturbed feelings of severe anxiety, depression, self-pity, guilt, 
undeservingness, which is one of the main feelings which goes with none, self-acceptance, self-punishment, self-damnation, and what's more, you might even be too sacrificial and over-achieving, and those are indications of non-acceptance unconditionally of you. Now, what are the main causes of non-acceptance or conditional self-acceptance? Because most of you, most of the world does accept themselves conditionally. When you do X, which you consider good, then you accept yourself. When you don't do Y, which you consider bad, you do accept yourself. But why do you set these nutty conditions which will tend to knock you off and get you less of what you want? And the answer is, of course, in R.E.T., because you tell yourself asinine leaps. You tell yourself irrational musts, shoulds, and oughts. And in terms of achievement, you tell yourself, I have to do well, not I'd like to, but I must do well. And worse, you may tell yourself, I must do outstandingly well or perfectly well in order to accept myself. And then, lots of luck, you won't. Or I must, or and, I'd better say, you don't really say or, but and I must be approved, and then, of course, the worst aspects, I must be approved outstandingly by everyone, perfectly by everyone, at all times perfectly by everyone. Well, good luck on that one. And I must also, you often don't accept yourself because you say, I must arrange to get what I want without too much effort. I said before, the way you get self-acceptance is by determination and effort. But you tell yourself, I must get everything I want, or practically everything I want, without too much effort. And if I don't, I'm undeserving. I'll never be able to get what I want. And other people, of course, should help me get what I want. Now, you have these crazy ideas, these must, these absolutistic shoulds and oughts. Then you don't accept yourself or you accept yourself